don't know, but here from Wargaming Recon. And of course, I got to do a little magic because I forgot to do this. I am so sorry because this is not professional. <laughs> here we go. We pop that in. We do this. Ah, here from Wargaming Recon <laughs> right in the proper thing. And that's all kinds of, I'm on a hill. That's what it is. Anyway, um, I'm coming at you with another unboxing video. So let me rewind here. Okay. I'm going to keep that beginning in as bloopers, extras. People like extra stuff, right? You like when we mess up. So I am Jonathan J. Reinhardt, host of the Wargaming Recon podcast. And one of the things that we're doing here at the podcast from time to time, not very often, but every so often, is to do an unboxing video and extra video content. So today I'm doing another unboxing video for you. Yes, you, 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 and you, and you, oh, and you, and you, and you. Yes, all of you are getting this unboxing video. So I've done a few others on Cigar Box Battle Mats, and I'm recording with one of them right here. Da, 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 da. And also did War Gamers Terrain as I move out of frame. War Gamers Terrain right here is something else. So <clears throat> today's a very special thing. It's this gigantic box. Huge, right? It's very light. And as you can see, as I block out all the, the light that I have in my other light source. This is actually from my, one of my co-hosts, Mike Payne. He sent it to me very generously because I was telling him when I did the cigar box battle mat right here, right, that one of the cool things you can do with the battle mats is you put stuff under them. So I'm using, because I have kids, I'm using some of her stuff <laughs> to add hills and things. So if I show you, here is battle mat with hill, and it's this. And I was like, Mike, that is something I can do temporarily, but it's not great because it, it doesn't look so great. So he made me some polystyrene hills. I believe they're polystyrene. And he sent them to me. So I'm going to open up the box. It's huge. And I can tell you, he sent this from, as you see the back of a box, and I mean, very, very interesting. It's two pounds and change, almost three pounds. And it's a variety of sizes of hills. So let me get my handy dandy opening tool and we're going to open it. So let me flip it around so I can get anything better. I know from talking with Mike that he said one of the hills broke shortly after he made it. Now, these hills, including the broken one, it doesn't really matter because these hills, after going under the cigar box battle mat, they are not being intended for me to use them on top. So they're not going to look all pretty because he did that on purpose. I specifically said, hey, Mike, I need hills, and what am I going to do? I'm, I do intend to review hills on the show in the near future. So if you have anyone in mind for a company or anything that you think would be good for a review, I will gladly consider them. And you can get in touch with me for that. So first, we got this, and you can see, look at them. All these different sizes and shapes. So they're really cool. Let's move the box out of the way, because it's huge, and there's a lot here. And I know it's an unboxing video, but you really don't need to see all that, that big box that whole time, right? So let's just show some of the hills. So he did make them out of polystyrene. you see the blue, and I asked him if it wasn't too much trouble for him to do, to kind of do an angular slope. So you see, this is a nice big one. It's a cool shape. So if I put it underneath, as I move some boxes out of the way, you see we got a hill here. And of course, I don't have any minis handy, but my phone is pretty slippery. So if I put my phone on, it doesn't go. And you think, oh, case, it's grippy, but it's not. This is very slippery. I put it on a, my couch and it slides off. So there's plenty of room for models to go on. It's 
a steep, a, a steep enough. Can I talk? It's a steep enough slope so that it provides some height, but then also it's shallow enough so that models can go on it. And the fact that it is just foam, polystyrene, I believe is what it actually is. It doesn't matter that it looks like this. If I wanted to, and I've talked to Mike about this, I can easily get this ready to go on top of the table. So what I've always done in the past, and I haven't done a whole lot of this, so I'm still you know, relatively new. And when I say this, I mean like this kind of stuff, is just to get some PVA glue, usually 50-50 mix. You do some PVA glue and water, but you dilute the PVA glue. White glue, Elmer's glue is fine. And you put the glue all over this, right? You go here, here, and you just paint it on liberally. And then you flock it. You dip it in the flock, you scoop it, put the flock, whatever your basic material is. But Mike actually had a better suggestion. So you said you take one of these, here's another hill. And before you do that, get some craft glue. Because you could use like Vallejo, not glue, paint, craft paint. You could use some Vallejo paint, you could use some GW paint, Citadel paint, any of that. But it's going to be more expensive. So get some cheap craft glue, uh, craft paint, sorry, acrylic paint, green, or he said brown. And before you do the PVA glue thing, you just put a coat of paint on this. So you would just put your acrylic paint on it, and it might soak it up a little bit because it is that. Do not use spray paint because the spray paint will eat into it. So it's going to look like crap when you're done. It'll have gouges and things like this. And this was in there, obviously, but like it would be worse. So if you had a nice smooth thing like this, it would eat into it. So use some nice acrylic paint, brown or green, or if you're doing a snowy hill, you do white. I'm just looking off camera because I have my <laughs> white um, cigar box battle mat that's snowy. And you, you do that, and then you do the 50-50 mix of PVA glue and, um, and water, or white glue, Elmer's glue, and water. And while that is still wet, and I said just do in segments, so you would do like right over this section right here, right between my fingers, you do that first. And then you get the flock on. And then you do the next one and the flock and the next one. Make sure you let the acrylic paint, the craft paint, dry completely. Give it a day, 24 hours, 48 hours to be extra safe. But give it a day. And that way it's dry. And then touch it. Make sure it's not tacky. Make sure it's dry to the touch. And then do the 50-50 mix of white or PVA glue with water. Otherwise, you're going to be a mess. It's going to be gross. It's not going to look right. And the purpose of this is that, so the glue holds the flock on or whatever your basic material is. And then if any cuttings come off from use, as it will, I mean, you could spray Dell coat on if you wanted to kind of help seal it um, and everything, but the flock will come off in time. It's just, it happens when you do this kind of stuff. That way you still have the color underneath and the flock's not gonna completely cover it either. So again, you'll have the color, the color underneath. So here's a nice small one. Here's a nice little tiny hill. And so one of the cool things is, that I asked them uh, was to make it so that I could kind of put them on top of one another. So here's a nice big hill, and you can add levels. So as we zoom down to my workspace here, you're going to see we have all these different things. So let's move some off to the side. Before I forget, let's close the hobby knife so I don't damage anything. So we get this, and we put it underneath. And you smooth it out, and I got a hill. Let's say I want to add a little more height to it. So you can create a taller hill, a nice level. Now look. And you can do this. And you just smooth things out on your battle mat. So you see it's more natural looking. And you could even do something like this. So. So you have them here. We can even add a little something like that. And then you get this realistic looking shape. And you do that in a few spaces. They don't all have to be so tall either. If you just need a little extra give because you just want it to show a slight little bit of elevation, you put a tiny one in, put it down, and here's just a little extra something and depending on your scale obviously you're going to end up with it being a mountain 
or being just a slight little whatever with the 54 millimeter armies and plastic stuff I have, these would be best, basically nothing. But you build them up, and there you go. So that's the unboxing of Mike Payne's Hills. Just toss these back here. Tons of hills in here, tons. Really nice big ones and plateaus, and this thing is huge. It's great. And if I needed to, I could cut them down to size using that hobby knife you saw. So here, I just put it in. You can get a nice big plateau. It's gorgeous. You can put some terrain on this. It's big enough for that. And it just, it would look really good. And then you got your mat, and you got it in soft. You like it so soft. <laughs> it's so soft. And underneath. Bam. Polystyrene. Buy them sheets. It's cheap enough to do. I, in theory, could do this myself, but I'm just not handy with it. So you get one of those tools and you cut in, or a, a nice hobby knife, you go. It, it'll actually dull your knife pretty quickly, but it's something you could do, and you're done. So thank you for watching this unboxing here from me at Wargaming Recon. I hope you'll take the time to listen to the podcast at wargamingrecon.com. We'll have more unboxings and videos coming to you in the near future. And until then, visit our website, wargamingrecon.com. And also right down here, wait, here, here. Yeah, see, do, 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 name, my name, and the website. And you go right there, and you'll have, see, I was looking at I was like, where is it? I'm looking on the screen to see. And right there, and you'll find it down here. And you go there, and you get the podcast. And one other cool thing, if you go there, is one of the episodes of the show, way, way, way back, actually tells you how to make this table. So you see, I got the cigar box battle mat on them. And beforehand, I was using this felt. And I have many shades of felt, but it is just roofing tiles, um, plywood. And underneath is just a regular folding table that you could buy anywhere for cheap. So that's on the website. It's an easy and cheap way to do this. And I will tell you, my wife actually enjoys having this. It's set up year-round, but she enjoys having it because... I'm recording this in December. We're getting near Christmas and the holidays and everything, uh, Hanukkah and so forth. She uses it to wrap presents on. So, of course, when she wraps presents on it, I, I told her, give me a heads up because I'm going to take the cigar box battle mat off because I don't want it to get yucky. Uh, although, if you did, you can wash it or so they say. So, that's something I'm going to test out for the full review. So, full review of the cigar box battle mat 2017 be coming at some point. Full review of all the stuff from the Wargamers terrain that I had. <laughs> <laughs> that I had uh, already did an unboxing for in 2017. And then Mike's, he doesn't do these for, you know, just anyone. He does them for me because he's a buddy and he cares and he's a lovely guy. Uh, so not a review of Mike's Hills, although I got to say, this is the kind of thing I would look for when I I'd compare these to like the real hills by that go on top of stuff. But as Mike said, why pay an arm and a leg for... Granted, they, I'm sure they would be nice looking hills, but from some other company that are already done, if they're just going under your mat, you just slide them under, and no one's going to see them. He's like, I'll just do this, and you're done. So thank you so much, Mike, and thank you, everyone, for watching. As you know, no matter what you do, no matter how busy you are, you know you have to. You need to keep on gaming.